Welcome to the SPSS tutorial for independent t-tests. This is Dr. Amanda rockinson Zapku, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to conduct an independent t-test for a research problem using the statistical software SPSS. Let's begin by considering the research question. The question for this tutorial is, is there a difference in the mean computer confidence scores for males and females who are enrolled in an undergraduate introduction to computers course? Based on this research question, the null hypothesis which we will be testing is, there is no statistically significant difference between the mean computer confidence scores of males and females who are enrolled in an undergraduate introduction to computer course. From both the null hypothesis and the research question, you will note that the independent variable in which we are dealing with is sex, male and female. The dependent variable in which we are dealing with is the computer confidence score. Since we have one categorical independent variable with two levels, males and females, and one continuous dependent variable, the computer confidence score, and we want to know whether there's a statistically significant difference in the mean score between the two groups, whether males and females differ significantly in terms of their computer confidence scores, we want to conduct an independent samples t-test. Let's consider in this instance that an introduction to computer instructor already collected the data that we need. He gave both the males and females in his courses the co computer confidence scale, and he exported that data into an SPSS file for us. Now we simply need to conduct the t-test using the SPSS file and write the results section. Thus we begin by opening SPSS. Then to locate the SPSS file in which we will work, we click File, Open, Data, and we locate the desired SPSS file on our computer. We click the file, and then click Open to open the data set in the SPSS Data Editor window. Please click Open to progress in this tutorial. The data set you selected should now open in the SPSS Data Editor window. Now you're ready to perform the t-test. To perform an independent samples t-test, from the menu at the top of the screen, click Analyze, then click on Compare Means, then on Independent Sample t-test. The Independent Sample t-test box should open. First you want to move the independent variable into the section labeled Grouping Variable. In this case, our independent variable is sex, male and female. Click sex and it should be highlighted. Next, click the arrow next to the grouping variable box. This should move the independent variable into that box. Once you've moved the independent variable, you need to define the levels of the independent variable. To do this, click Define Groups. The Define Group box will appear. In this box, type in the numbers used in the data set to code each group. In our current file, male equals 1 and female equals 2. Therefore, in the Group 1 box, type 1. And in the Group 2 box, type 2. When you're finished, click Continue. Next, we are going to move the dependent variable into the test, test variable box. Click our dependent variable, computer confidence. Click the arrow to move it into the test variable box. You are now finished, so now you can click OK. From these procedures, an output box will be generated with all your results for your independent t-test. Let's take a look at them. Let's first look at the group statistics box. SPSS gives you the mean and standard deviation for each of your groups, in this case male and female. For example, you can see that the male's mean score is 34.02 and the standard deviation is 4.91. SPSS also gives you the number of people in each group, N. There are 184 males and 252 females. This box is important for two reasons. First of all, it's important to check the values. For example, are the N values for males and females correct? Or do you think that there's some missing data? 
Additionally, this box is useful for reporting descriptive statistics that are required for your APA results section. Next, you'll use the SPSS output to check one of the assumptions for the independent t-test. Note that you'll need to check additional assumptions such as normality by creating a histogram or running a normality test, but here you can check the assumption of equal variance. The first section of the independent sample test box gives you results for the Levine's test for equal variance. See it says Levine's test for equal variance? This test helps you determine whether the variance of scores for the two groups is the same. So um, is there a variation between the males and the females? The outcome of this test helps you determine which of the t-test values um, that SPSS provides um, is the one that you'll use. If your significant value is larger than 0.05, for example 0.07 or 0.10, you should use the first line in the table. It says equal variance assumed. If the significance level of the Levine's test is has an alpha level of 0.05 or less, this means that the variance between the two groups, males and females, are not the same, and you'll want to use the line in the table which refers to equal variance not assumed. See the second line. In this specific example, you'll note that the significance level is 0 0.06. This is larger than the alpha level of 0 0.05. Thus, this means that the assumption of equal variance has not been violated, that the assumption is tenable. Therefore, we will use, um, we will look at the first line that says equal variance assumed. Now we're going to turn our attention to the actual results for the t-test to determine if there's a significant difference between our two groups. We do this by referring to the column labeled SIG two-tailed, which stands for significance, which appears under the section labeled t-test for equality of means. Note that there are two values given, one for equal variance and the other for unequal variance. Since our Levine's test showed that our equal variance assumption was tenable, we will use the first line labeled equal variance assumed. The significance level, the SIG two-tailed value, is 0.105. As this value is not above the required alpha level of 0.05, 0.05 or less usually says it's significant, we can conclude that there is not a statistically significant difference in the mean um, scores for computer confidence for males and females. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. You'll also note that in this box, um, the mean difference between the two groups, as well as the 95% confidence interval of differences showing both the um, lower value and the upper value. The T, the um, DF, which stands for degrees of freedom, the SIG, the mean difference, as well as the 95% inter interval of um, the differences are all important to report within your actual result APA results section. You also need to report effect size, and you can take the numbers from this output and report effect size. We're going to talk about effect size next. As I said, now we're going to look at how we can use the SPSS output to calculate effect size. Unfortunately, SPSS output does not calculate the effect size for us automatically for a t-test, as it will for many of the other tests that we look at in this course. Before we do that, let's remember what effect size is. Effect size, an effect size statistic provides us with the indication of the magnitude of the difference between our two groups. It's usually an effect size statistic is usually or most commonly either eta squared or Cohen's d. We're going to use eta squared. Eta squared can range from 0 to 1, and it represents the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that's explained by the independent variable. In our case, the proportion of the variance in the computer confidence scores um, that is explained by sex. Let's look at how we can calculate eta squared using this output. As you see in the box, the formula for eta squared is t squared divided by t squared plus n1 plus n2 minus 2. As we plug in the numbers from n, the number, as well as the t statistic, you'll see that eta squared in this case is 0 0.006. As you'll remember, I said that Eta squared can range from 0 to 1. Point zero 0.01 is usually considered a small effect, point zero 0.06 is usually a moderate effect, and point one four is usually a large effect according to the guidelines that Cohen provides. In our current example, you can see that the effect size of point zero zero 0.006 is very small. 
expressed in terms of percentage, that is if we multiply eta squared 0 0.006 by 100, only 0.6% of the variance in the computer confidence score is explained by sex. Now we've looked at the different parts of the SPSS output and briefly talked about how it relates to our APA results section. We're now going to use this output to actually write an APA results section. Now here is one way that you can use the SPSS output to write a results section. Take a few minutes to read through this example results section. Thank you for taking the time to complete this SPSS tutorial for the independent t-test. It is my hope that you now know how to conduct an independent t-test for a research problem using SPSS.